Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. We are the 5 of July 2022. Um, so today we have your servitor, Damien Duportal. So Hervé is not there. Maroc might or might not be. Uh, Stéphane, no Basile, no team. Ah, oh, Mark just arrived, and we have we know. No Mark. Okay, so four attendees today. Let's get started. First of all, weekly release today. Uh, the release is currently on hold, as far as I know. Um, the reason is that a, a regression has been detected. And right now there is a, a tentative to fix that regression. So the regression is mainly uh, um, is mainly related to WebSocket that seems to be not working slash remove slash not behaving as expected with the latest GT upgrade. Um, I just realized I sh forgot to share the link to the notes. So let me do that right now. So it's on hold. Uh, team and Team Yacom and Daniel Beck are uh, aware of that. They have blocked the pipeline, the release pipeline, to be sure that even if it's triggered automatically, no risk. Uh, so great exercise for us to see how we could handle uh, better in the future the security release when we want to disable the weekly release. That could be a, a good, let's say, manual test. Nothing expected from the infra team. So it was just a for you why. Um, the team will should handle that uh, if they ask. Uh, and if you are around there, you don't hesitate to help them, but that should be okay. We didn't change anything on the infra as far as I remember. Another announcement on my side. I don't know if any of you has any. Okay, um, so let's get started with the task that we were able to close and finish last week. Uh, we had three GitHub permission. I handled one specific for Jean-Marc, but the other were handled either by Marc or team. Um, one uh, password reset. Thanks, Marc, for handling that. So user uh, had the need to reset the password on accounts Jenkins.io. So we try to to gain enough trust on the user with different proof before being able to reset to be sure that there isn't someone taking it over. So on that, actually, I've got a, mm -hmm. a, a technique I've been using there that I'm not sure if others want to use it or not, or if I should document it. I've typically found what their GitHub account was by, by guessing reverse engineering, et cetera and then ask them to clone, fork a copy of a Jenkins repo into that GitHub account so that I can see the fork. It's their way of proving they have control of it. And, and then they just delete the fork. The idea was, okay, I now know you can, the, this person who sent the email received my message that said, fork a copy of the Git client plugin. They forked it. I can see it publicly that they did the fork. And now I know they have control of that account, of that github.com account without having to ask them further questions. Nice. Um, no, it, it doesn't to... work if we can't associate their Jenkins account to a GitHub account. So it's it's imperfect. But the, the hey, fork this repository was something that, that let them see, oh, okay, I can prove to you I have control of this account and I don't have to do anything damaging. Ask them to fork uh, Jenkins repo to prove they have access to this search account. Nice one, it's yeah, still useful. Then... Can I ask you to, to see if you can write this down on the run book that will help uh, even uh, quickly draft uh, content, but uh, it's written on the notes there. And yes, so that will be useful if any, any of us has any question. Thanks a lot. Any question on the free GitHub permission or the password reset, which are usual uh, maintenance? Okay. Then we had the made JVM statistic not available, open by Basil. 
Um, sounds like it was an issue on the statistic calculation. So Andrew gave the issue. They seems to have fixed and Basil uh, updated the documentation of the Jenkins usage stat repository. So no action expected from us. Um, so thanks Hervé uh, and thanks uh, Andrew for that help. Uh, we helped Adrien Le Charpentier to set up an, uh, a pipeline for the repository plugin Hill scoring, which is a Google Summer of Code project that Adrien is monitoring. Uh, so sounds like he's happy. His need was quite classical, generating a jar file and run Docker container with test container modules from Maven directly. So we gave him documentation, we gave him technical link, and we pointed some technical element and documentation. Um, and Hervé configured the repository uh, with success on CI Jenkins IO. So yes, we have all the details. Sounds like uh, he is happy, closed the issue, so nothing to do here. Thanks for the work, folks, on that one. Um, finally, the first big one we had that we completed. Um, Stefan and I worked on redirecting the domains, the, for, the legacy domains pkgjenkinsci.org to pkgjenkins.io. Um, we had a lot and a lot of issues last Friday. We had some outages on the, of a few minutes. Uh, we were able to fix it. So the summary is that when we have a website behind Fastly, we have to ensure that the host, the host header of the request that Fastly sends to the backend is the same as the domain that Fastly used to connect in HTTPS for the same backend. For instance, in that case, end user were reaching Fastly with PKG Jenkins IO. While Fastly configure uh, which host that service is caching PKG origin the Jenkins .io. So by keeping the same header from the original user, Apache was cutting the connection ending on a terrible HTTP 4 to 1 uh, error. That's the root cause. Uh, there has been a chain of events and changes that we did. The good thing is that now Stefan and I understand way better the PKG Jenkins IO file system, Apache configuration, and that was a great opportunity to clean up and continue working on the puppet stuff. Um, we ended up, uh, it's not written there, but one of the consequences there is that we successfully uh, enabled the Vagrant uh, manual uh, tes acceptance testing for the Puppet role. It was using VirtualBox, which made it impossible for Tim or Stefan to use them on their IRM Mac. And it was also impossible to run VirtualBox machines on the CI. Now it used Vagrant with Docker which means we have a lot of new use case. It's clearly powerful and it works with Intel and IRM flawlessly. So we can start adding a bunch of infrastructure automation tests. So thanks folks. That's oh. a nice consequence of this one. Congratulations, you did all the work. <laughs> so thanks for the help because I wouldn't have um, spent only one day i think I, that would uh, without your help stefan i would have spent the whole weekend on that um, tricky one so thanks a lot host header and sni must be the same um, allowed us to improve puppet vagrant with docker now so that's the road for cleaning up puppet uh, especially with the work that Stefan is doing on update Jenkins. That's all on the fully closed tasks. Any question? So work in progress. Um, first one, Kubernetes upgrade. It has been done operationally speaking. Let me move that one on top. Oop. So great work, Stefan and Hervé. They handled this upgrade on the four cluster during the week. Cube, uh, I'm trying to take notes. Uh, so what is left to do before closing the issue, Stefan? Um, the post-mortem kind of, I don't know, you mm -hmm. say that when there is yep. no, uh, 
that the, the issue, but uh, I wrote a draft and we have to uh, check together how uh, we can improve that draft because my English is not good enough. Okay. Are done. Uh, Post-mortem. So can you summarize the issue we had? The main issue? Uh, uh, yes, we, we, we were, uh, we dumped into something. We had to back up everything in case we had a problem that took us some time. But the main problem was on AKS uh, and AKS only. On Azure Kubernetes, yep. I forgot. I forgot. The per persistent volume based on Azure file bucket. And so uh, Azure file is like uh, Amazon S3. It's not a block device, it's a files, it's a, it's a file bucket. Um, the, uh, as, uh, Azure changed the implementation to CSI. And the thing yeah. is that despite the change log telling us that it should be transparent, um, each time Kubernetes mounts these buckets, gen uh, Kubernetes generates a temporary token. It's named a SAS token, which is encrypted with a private SSH private key. That token change on each mount remount. That's a transparent token that no user should have. It's a technical item. And that token was by whatever uh, bug, combination of bug in Kubernetes itself and AKS, that secret was created always on the default namespace if you did not upgrade your persistent volume to the new CSI driver. And there was a directive that you could change to say, create it on that namespace where it should have worked, except that the persistent volume, their definition in YAML, once created on AKS cannot be changed ever. So we add to delete the persistent volume, but keeping the bucket and create a new persistent volume with the new uh, hotfix pointing to the old data. Yeah, and took the, main, us some... the main problem was the, the fear to lose everything. So we took the time to back up everything to make sure that if something was wrong, we still had a backup. So that created a one hour uh, outage on the LDAP and on the mirror download system, get Jenkins say. So that was quite the impact. Um, and so needs to migrate. So the post-mortem takes some improvement on the procedure next time. So the we can close that issue once the upgrade to Kubernetes 1.23 issues will be written by Stefan and Hervé based on the previous one, the improvement, the changes for the procedure, because some we need some enhancement somewhere and some things are outdated. So we also need to write the next upgrade issue based on what we learned. And finally, uh, with the post-mortem, that should be a consequence of the post-mortem, but I can already say that, we need to migrate the AKS persistent volumes to the new CSI driver. Yeah. So Hervé, that is with that, I think Stefan have an idea, a global idea. So that was the last big task that we need. So great job, folks, almost there. We need to close that issue. Uh, once this is finished. Let's wait for Hervé to be back from holidays. So I propose that we keep that issue for the next milestone. Is that okay for you? Yes. Next one, consider removing embeddable status plugin. Um, <clears throat> so that's a plugin that has been required to be removed. Um, the thing is that it might broke the readme or documentation of some users, of some plugin users. Uh, I don't remember, someone checked, I think Mark checked that there are as, yeah, we have 169 plugins. So by courtesy to these users, we will remove that one from CI Jenkins IO, the public facing website, once we will have opened a bunch of pull requests on this, uh, on this document, on these elements. Uh, Hervé is, uh, was working on that part before the long weekend. So he found a tool that allow us to batch pull request opening to a given repo. And he has a tool that does some kind of regex, but simpler uh, search. So it's a kind of super set, but easier to use. So now he has to assemble all these tools. Sounds like that um, uh, we, have, uh, we had a long discussion. We have a lot of tools 
that could help on that area. So right now that one should be moved to the next iteration. The goal is to remove that from all of our Jenkins instances, almost there, only CI Jenkins IO. So I move that and the RV will take care of that when he's back. Any question? No. So, Folks, I need help to take some notes, please. I'll try. At least preparing the next issues will help me a lot. So I can only uh, comment them. I tried to use uh, Hervé's script, but it, it didn't work on my machine. So oh. I need to ask him to send him send me his machine. <laughs> Still ci.jenkins.r. Only CI Jenkins are you left? Can I ask you to add the link of the next uh, issues, please, while I'm yeah. trying to take notes? Yes. Harvey is working on the batch pull request as a courtesy to contributors. Oh, but you yes. just already sent that to the next milestone. Right now, we are covering the issues that are part of the milestone, July the 5th. Yes. I'm taking then... one after the other. So I have put two bullets on work in progress, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the. That oh, we have to oh, oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Understood. No problem. So I'm taking the third. Can I let you start on the fourth, yes. please? So <clears throat> the enable development integration in Jira, nothing was done. So we, we need to work on that. Uh, alas, the infra team uh, has a dependency on the administrator and the Jenkins organization. So I think uh, we will ask for help to Tim and Daniel to see if they can start this with the help of uh, James, because I understand the requirements, but yeah, we need the Jira admin and the Jenkins admin, which we are not for the second point. And from Jenkins admins. Any question on this one? I'm moving it to the next milestone. Uh, evaluate retry condition to improve the stability of builds. So that means installing uh, experimental plugins for pipeline on CI Jenkins IO and see if it improved the current flackiness. See the issue later. Um, for that one, we delayed since two weeks. Um, we need to to ask uh, Jesse if it's okay, where is the plugin, and so we can install the plugin. Uh, was waiting for after the weekly this week, so we can start proceeding either later today or tomorrow, or Thursday if Jesse is out. So we can do it today or tomorrow right after the weekly. The goal as a reminder is to automatically retry builds when the agent goes down. Is it uh, relative to the, the, not the last one, but the one before CI Jenkins IO agents are very flaky? Yes, that there is a correlation. Uh, provide both PowerShell and PWA SH on all agent templates. Um, it's in production for virtual machines and Hervé has to do it on the Docker images. Um, that's all. Whip, VMs, okay. But still Windows container images to do. Um, reminder that task was to be sure that we don't, uh, end user, don't have to choose between both keywords on their pipeline on Windows environment, because one is the old PowerShell, the old, the second is the recent PowerShell. Some, some machine has both, some machine has only one of two. 
So the goal is to provide uh, an alias or a solution on each. So Hervé is working on that one. Require Java 11 infrastructure thread. Uh, for this one, nothing to say. I will keep moving it to the next one because we still have some work that one should exist until we have the Jenkins LTS with uh, that drops the support of GDK 8. So far, no one complained as far as I, as I know from the last week release, that is the first one that dropped GDK 8 support. Or maybe people who didn't read the change log, but that's not, there, is, there isn't anything we can do about that. No expectation from the team for now. Let's keep an eye on this one. So, sorry, which one? Require Java 11 infrastructure. Okay, so I don't put that to the next milestone. I put that on uh, on uh, uh, infra team sync next. Next, we can remove the milestone. Clear from this uh, milestone. Okay. Yeah, I will. If there is anything that we have to do related to that topic, where well, we will move it on the current milestone at that time. Otherwise, we don't need a milestone because no action required from us. Good Thank catch. You. Migrate updates Jenkins IO to another cloud. Stefan, your turn. Mm. I take note. Oh, that's that's a very nice one. Um, I'm working on the Terraform part, and uh, yesterday and today I was uh, bumping my head on the the access on SSH. I thought that was a, a firewall problem definition. In fact, no, that was a getaway and rule for the getaway problem. Um, it's working since like an hour, uh, launching, spawning the, the VM and I can access it uh, by SSH. We still need to clean it up a little and to make sure we got all the uh, good users to use within the VM, uh, but it's, it's going forward. Not easy, but from scratch and jump to the next tag. So congrats, uh, Stefan, because yeah, as I told Mark, we know now that what you don't pay in bandwidth with Oracle infrastructure, you pay on trying to understand the documentation of the API. Exactly. <laughs> That's Just a minute, I have an invited guest. <laughs> oh, Just a minute, sorry. I don't feel confident to handle the, the meeting alone. There. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. So great job, uh, Stefan. Should sounds really good. So we should be able to start the puppet production, puppet work. So more puppet work for you. Yes. Um, so continue next. Uh, Next one, still the priority. We might have to play ping pong on this one. So sometimes if you are blocked, I will take some part, then block you. We will try as much as possible to share knowledge and have you working on that part. Um, the goal was uh, full autonomy on the Terraform infra part, but for the puppets, we might need to do it to the two of us because of the priority, because we really need to move this to move forward on other topics. No problem. And I can't expect you to be a Terraform expert and a Puppet expert and a Docker <laughs> expert and all of these at the same time. So no problem. It, it's only uh, that that one is required because of the cost. No problem. Any question? Okay. Uh, next topic, Docker Hub rate limiting. Uh, I didn't have time to do anything. So um, next my time. Yes, next milestone. It's on the uh, portal. Nothing done yet. Uh, replacing, oh, I forgot to ask uh, Mark uh, status. So we move it automatically. I uh, pinged Mark uh, since after last week meeting. Uh, the CPUZ uh, agent is still not available. It's not really a problem, but yeah. We need a mark to either share the SSH key with us so we can take it. We need a solution. Uh, maybe puppet ties automate, but yeah. Nothing block. 
nothing. So I will copy and paste and mention Mark instead of me. Okay. Um, Mark, wait, wait. Um, CI Jenkins IO tests are very flaky. So we need to start working on this one. Along with 502 proxy raw when accessing pull request on Jenkins CI Jenkins. So both issues are on CI Jenkins IO, the public instance, the big one. The flakiness of agents. Uh, first, uh, we have a set of different uh, little items. Sounds like that most of this flakiness is associated to Kubernetes agent first. Uh, each time we have a GNLP agent. So it sounds like that we add Kubernetes changes. So the thing is that these problems happened either during the Kubernetes upgrade. We have a new Kubernetes version, so that might change things at the network part. Um, and also we had the updates and PKG issues. So that might that could have been a cause. However, uh, Joseph Peterson just uh, edited like yesterday some issue happened. So it looks like we have agent that cut the connection. All these agents are Kubernetes, so we might need some help on that area. Uh, but also most of them are related to the bomb, the infamous bomb build which spawn 100 of 80, it need 180 executors and we only have 150 um, elements. So I'm gonna try to write down different elements on this one, but right now, yes, it's quite annoying. So what solution do we have right now? First of all, uh, the Jenkins is waiting a lot trying to create virtual machines that has a public IP, but we reach the limits due to Docker rate limiting. So we have to update the configuration to not add the public IP for the IMIM machines that could be used for some of the BOM or acceptance test builds. That should be an improvement, but less time with the orchestrator trying to block some threads. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, we need to start again the metrics and um, traces subject on CI Jenkins IO. So we need someone on the upcoming weeks to take back the try to restart the discussion with Elastic so we can create an instance of their uh, open telemetry uh, SaaS system. So we can connect CI Jenkins IO and we will have traces of the build so we can see what could happen in terms of timing. And the third the, element. The, the, sorry, the Datadog plugin cannot tell no, us that? That's different. Um, that's a different topic. We need open telemetry. Datadog could do open telemetry, but the thing is that we have Elastic proposing to sponsor us, and oh, Datadog okay. already sponsor us. So the we we will want to use Datadog for the private instances such as Infra CI or Release CI. So we could get traces from our work because Datadog is by default private. That's only our access. And for the public part, Elastic provide a public dashboard. So the idea is to split. And so we split roles. We have a comparison, and we use both. Perfect. Uh, but yes, Datadog also has a service, and the question is which one to choose. Let's say both, but we need one. Um, then we have what we said earlier, the plugin from Jesse that will uh, allow builds to restart. Because the reason that annoyed uh, uh, Joseph initially is that because his build has to trigger a new build again. There are some discussion also about the BOM plugin. Do we need that much? We have the subject of Hervé growing the partnership with DigitalOcean that will allow us to have clearly way more um, uh, way more container and capacity in DigitalOcean. So with all these tiny elements that should keep us for the next week, uh, then the, the thing is that if we aren't able to solve this flakiness because it's hard to understand what's going on, um, then in that case, we will have to ask some uh, for help from uh, Daniel or Basil or any experts, give them access and someone that a developer of the core that helped us going on that direction. So let's continue for the upcoming two weeks because there are two elements on CI Jenkins IO 
uh, it's really hard to understand from an infrastructure perspective. We, we really don't have enough observability items there. So we'll, let me have an answer. For the next two weeks <clears throat> set of minor changes, hoping to understand what is going on. Um, because I don't know that request aborted exception, it's like, I don't even know. Um, we need better observability. I, we have to improve observability. Traces, uh, <clears throat> aggregating pod logs. The thing is that collecting all these logs could be really huge. Datadog might be useful there, or Elastic again. But we need a collection of these logs to see what happened on the agent side. I have no idea how to deal with that thing. I mean, that instance is almost unmanageable. I will strongly suggest creating a CI Jenkins IO from scratch on Kubernetes because we will benefit from full config as code, uh, improve manageability without using a puppet, you know, not having to split our configuration systems. And then we could benefit from all the Kubernetes log collection and all these uh, opportunities, which we don't have today. So let's see. Maybe, um, maybe we can yeah. have a bone, a boom specific uh, uh, controller, which could um, be a Kubernetes yes. only. Yes, also, uh, since we have weekly, that could be a way to move around that. That's a good point. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. So let's see. Um, we'll try to discuss that on the upcoming weeks. So let's keep all an eye on this. But yes, yeah, Jenkins might be. Yeah. Uh, there is that issue. We haven't been able to work on it yet. Um, when you go and see Jenkins IO to the Jenkins score, if you try to go to the pull request tab, you end on the uh, 502. Because it takes so much time to list all the pull requests. I don't wow. know why we have to check what Daniel uh, checked, but um, we reached the timeout between the frontal Apache and the backend Jenkins. If you need to see that as an administrator, you can open a SSH tunnel to the CI VM and then you can see it. You just have to wait longer. So that's one to add to the next uh, upcoming milestone. Um, we will have thanks. To Many thanks. Any question on these topics? No. So we'll try to start working on that. Um, I will prefer you folks finishing the Kubernetes documentation and working on update CI Jenkins. And then uh, we'll see if we can take the CI Jenkins IO. We still have the infra team sync next. Just one check to see if we did not miss anything. No, nothing added. So still the same important, but not prior uh, tasks. Any question? We got a lot of work. <laughs> That's not a question. Yep, we always have, always have. Okay, so in terms of milestones, I can close this week. So many thanks for the help on managing the issues. Oh yeah, sorry. Yep, that's uh, that one. Yeah. And so I'm updating the notes. And let's go, 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 keep forward. <laughs> I'm stopping sharing my screen. Do you have any last question for the recording or the posterity? I don't know. Nope, so see you next week. I'm stopping the recording.